My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. How do you feel great on vacation? Like really good? Easy. You go to Aruba. You'll spend your time relaxing on cool white sand beaches and floating in healing blue water. You'll immerse yourself in natural wonder and find your center on an island where things move at your speed. You won't just feel great. You'll feel relaxed, renewed, and ready for life. That's the Aruba effect. Plan your trip at aruba.com. It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Friday, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send in the questions, and I answer them for you. Oh, and if you do send in a question, we'll physically mail you a copy of our hardcover workbook as long as you're in the U.S. and we have some left. Now, if you're outside of the U.S., still send in a question because we'll email you a digital version of the workbook. Now, I'll tell you how to send in a question at the end of the show, but for now, let's hear today's question as we optimize your life. Today's question came via email. Karen writes, Hi, Dr. Neal. Can you talk about branched chain amino acids and creatine and if there's any benefit of using these products after workouts? Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to send in your question, Karen. Now, in typical Dr. Neal fashion, I'll start from the beginning just to make sure we all understand what branched chain amino acids are and how that differs from creatine. Then I will get into whether they're useful or not. Now, a while back, when I was at the gym, I heard a couple of gentlemen discussing branched chain amino acids. One of them was saying, dude, you've got to start taking branched chain amino acids. They've helped me improve my strength so much and my partner is noticing how much more ripped I am. His buddy then asked, so which ones are you taking? He replied, I take creatine, taurine, and CLA. Unfortunately, this individual was a bit mistaken about what branch chain amino acids are. He mentioned creatine, taurine, and CLA. Creatine is not a branch chain amino acid. More on this a little later. Taurine isn't either. And CLA, or conjugated linoleic acid, is actually a fat. Now, before I answer your question, Karen, I'll start with a quick disclaimer. I am not sponsored by any supplement manufacturer. My goal, as always, is to tell you the truth to the best of my knowledge. More often than not, my information comes from published research studies. By doing this, I'm hoping that what I report to you comes from a minimally biased perspective. This is because when we rely on other people's experiences with supplements or meal plans or workout routines, there's a really high probability that what they're doing may not work for you at all. This is why we need well-designed studies so we can try and figure out if branch chain amino acids and creatine supplements, for example, work for most people. Also, please know that each supplement manufacturer is different. Some follow strict quality and purity standards. Others don't. So, before you buy a supplement, it's best to research the manufacturer first. Okay, now, finally, let's get to it. I'll start by describing what branched-chain amino acids are. The branched-chain amino acids include proteins that the body cannot create on its own. Our bodies are pretty good at mixing and matching the proteins in some of the foods we eat to support optimal growth and development, but there are some proteins the body cannot make on its own. These include specific proteins called leucine, isoleucine, and valine. These three amino acids or proteins, same thing, are types of branched chain amino acids. So why are they called branched chain amino acids? Sometimes you'll see them abbreviated BCAAs. It's because if you were to look at these amino acids under a microscope, you would see that their chemical structure makes it look like that they have these branches growing out from the center or the trunk of the molecule. In fact, branched chain amino acids make up about a third of our skeletal muscle. 
So not only are our muscles composed of branched chain amino acids, but our bodies aren't able to produce them on their own. No wonder fitness enthusiasts are talking about supplementing with this stuff. And in fact, those that supplement with branched chain amino acids often believe that they are preventing muscle breakdown and improving their athletic performance. But do they actually do that? Sadly, the research is inconclusive. Some human studies have found that supplementing with branched chain amino acids helps to prevent muscle breakdown and improve athletic performance. Other studies, not so much. So some researchers believe that it's not about the total amount of branched chain amino acids consumed, but in order for them to be more effective, you need the right ratio of these branched chain amino acids. So you need the right ratio of leucine, isoleucine, and valine. The optimal ratio is still being studied, but some believe a ratio of two to one to one, leucine, isoleucine to valine is best. And to go back to your question, Karen, Consuming branched chain amino acids before or after a workout can be helpful. Now, does that mean you should take a branched chain amino acid supplement? For most, taking a branched chain amino acid supplement is relatively safe and has minimal side effects. But the problem is we still don't know what the ideal dosage is. Some think that one to five grams of branched chain amino acids is enough. However, when randomly testing some of the products available on the market, we find that some of them don't contain the amount of amino acids they claim. Even worse, some don't have any of the branch chain varieties at all. Instead, they use fillers. So like I said at the beginning of the show, be sure to do your due diligence and research any and all supplements you're currently taking or are planning on taking. A great resource is consumerlab.com. Also, keep in mind, the body may have a limit as to how much protein it can absorb at a time. If you're consuming more than that, especially through supplements, branched chain amino acid or not, your body may not use it, and it will either excrete it through your urine or convert it to fat. Now, the good news is you can find branched chain amino acids in many protein-rich foods we commonly consume, like dairy, eggs, meat, poultry, legumes, and fish. And the added bonus is that the proteins found in these foods are easily absorbed and used by the body. Now, onto creatine. Creatine is a compound that the liver naturally produces. It's a really interesting compound because some researchers call it an amino acid, whereas others refer to it as a metabolite. Either way, here's what we can agree on. Most animals, basically any animal that has a liver, including us humans, make creatine naturally. The term creatine is actually a shortened version of creatine's full name, creatine phosphate or phosphocreatine. When you buy creatine as a supplement, you may see it called creatine monohydrate. I'll discuss why that is in a bit. But basically, after the liver makes creatine in the form of creatine phosphate, it gets sent through the bloodstream to the muscles. Because this same process occurs in animals, if at any point we consume animal flesh, like beef, chicken, fish, pork, and so on, we consume small amounts of creatine. So, What does creatine do when it's in our muscles or when we eat it? Well, creatine helps our muscles generate energy. More energy in the muscles may mean more strength and endurance, and we want both of these effects when we're working out or competing. This is why creatine supplementation is so common. Most studies have found that supplementing with creatine can be helpful for high-intensity exercise that are short duration. So, creatine may be most helpful for exercises like weightlifting and sprinting. But if we're trying to improve our longer distance activities like running a mile or more or cycling or rowing or swimming, it may not be helpful. Other studies have found that for those with already high creatine levels in their systems, like those that eat a balanced diet, supplementing with extra creatine doesn't seem to help. Now, if you and your healthcare provider do decide that using creatine supplements is right for you, then you want to be sure to get the right type of supplement. The body seems to respond best when supplemented with creatine monohydrate, as opposed to its other forms, like creatine pyruvate. Studies have found that for most people, creatine supplementation is safe, provided that the product is free of impurities and that dosing instructions are followed. And when it comes to the best time to use it, studies have found that it may be most effective to supplement with creatine after a resistance training or strength training workout. Now, for those with pre-existing kidney disease, 
creatine supplementation is not recommended. This is because, again, any excess or unused creatine in the body has to be removed or excreted, and that is the job of the kidneys, which may place them under stress. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is that when we talk about branched chain amino acids, the research is a bit unclear. But if you and your doctor decide to give supplementation with either branched chain amino acids or creatine or both a try, then be sure to first create a demand for those supplements by performing some resistance training or strength training regularly, then follow the dosing instructions on the product packaging. When it comes to branched chain amino acids, according to the research I've seen, you can take them before or after a workout. And creatine may be most effective after a workout. Thank you again for taking the time to send in your question, Karen. Answering your questions is my favorite part of the show. And if you want to send in a question, remember, you'll get a physical copy of our workbook mailed to you if you're in the US and as long as we still have some available. You can email your question to health at oldpodcast.com or if you want your voice played on the show, come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. You can record straight from your computer's microphone. You can even play back your message and do retakes before sending it in. Or you can call in your question. The number is 1-61-I-LOVE-O-H-D. That's 1-614-568-3643. Thank you again so much for sending your questions in. All right, that'll do it for another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening every day and all the way through. I hope you have a great start to your weekend and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.